Hello everyone, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Aileen and here we like to talk about all things makeup, mostly luxury makeup, skincare, and fashion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I hope you consider subscribing and joining the family. So today, there's a lot going on in the internet, in the social world about this. But today we're gonna create a look with the Dior, with the 749 Romantic Voyage Quint. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then keep on watching. But before we go, comment, like, subscribe. Let's get to it. So you guys, right before or right after this goes up, there's going to be a live on my channel just discussing everything that has occurred around this. So everyone was under the impression that the 749 Romantic Voyage Quint looked like this. So I ordered it because that's what I wanted. And the Dior website said, and I'll see if I can post my order here. It said 749 Romantic Voyage. A, and it was described on the website as golden browns with an intense black. So this is what I got. This is like a topper shade and these are pinks and purple shades in the purple family. This is what I received. So the service with Dior.com, I'm not going to lie, has been atrocious. It was four calls in. I'm still pending resolution. But this is a beautiful quint. So I decided to keep it while I decide how I can get my hands on what I really want. <laughs> go figure which they don't know what that is <laughs> so let's just create a look i'll do some comparison swatches and we will go from there so first i'm going to go ahead and swatch this and i'm just going to go from left to right and one two i'll do three the middle four five it's just been very interesting just so much going on with this quint so this pink shade has a slight shimmer to it, like a satin, not a pure shimmer. The next shade is more like a topper and I do have studio light photos as well as natural light photos up on my Instagram at a Merch Beauty. So if you're not following me there, I, I think in my humble opinion that the Natural light swatches look a lot better than the studio lighting, but it was also cloudy and rainy, so I couldn't get like direct sunlight. But this is the third shade, but I did take it, and that also has like that shimmery satin finish. But I did take the photo when it wasn't raining at the time, so there was like a little peak of sun. And then we'll go on to the fourth shade. is this one here and this is like a soft rose and champagne this is like a clear topper with silver sprinkles and this is like a soft like a lavender and this has like a gray and purple hue with like a taupe undertone and the next one is matte which is the last shade. And this is more of a just plum purple. So there's the quint. And I have a few other quints. So I don't have like plum tool and any of those um, that I can compare it to, but I'm gonna compare certain shades to the ones that I do have. So the first one is pink Corolle, which looks like so. And it's not every shade from all these palettes, but I do want to compare a few. I'm going to compare this last shade. I feel like this is more purple. Definitely more of that bright purple. 
this one's brighter than this one. And again, this is from Pink Coral. And then that first shade of Pink Coral, which I thought may be comparable to this one, is brighter and more of a like Barbie pink than this one is. I'm trying to see, there you go. The one in the Romantic Voyage is a softer pink. Next, we will take a look at 879 Rouge Trafalgar, which is this one here. And I really just wanted to compare the topper shade on that one. But I believe the one, yes. So you, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but this is more pearl and silver in it, where this is more like champagne rose gold with little specks of glitter that are also silver, but the undertone of that topper is not the same. And then I will compare the last shade as well. So this is the last shade of the Rouge Trafalgar, which is similar, but it is different. So this is that satin finish and this is matte and this is much darker than this. And if you see how the light catches the purple, where here it really just doesn't catch that because it's darker and it's matte. So I have wiped off all the swatches from those other quince because what I'm really interested in and the first thing that came to mind and also someone commented on my Instagram was the new Chanel Serenite and how it would compare to this one. And that was really my initial thought as well. So this is the new Chanel Summer 2021. This is a 378 Serenite palette. And I will compare, I'll just swatch the whole palette next to this one so you can see the difference okay so here we are this is the dior quint and this is the chanel quad so this shade is matte there's nothing like that up here this shade does look similar to this one on camera however this has more purple where this has more gray and it's more of like that slate. This shade is fairly similar to this shade and that's the light purple. And this shade, there really isn't one comparable in the Dior Quint. Next, another one that came to mind immediately and in looking at it, it may just be one or two shades, is the Tom Ford Daydream. So I'll swatch the shades, I believe may be comparable, and I'm really just looking at these two here, because this leans more blue, and this is, I, I can swatch that one as well. Okay, so here are the three shades from the Tom Ford. So this shade is slightly similar to this, but this is more sheer. Although they're, they both have that silver, this really impacts with that silver where this is more sheer and silver leaning. This really just punch, packs a punch of silver. This shade is different. I think it's still closest to the Serenite quad. This is definitely brighter than the one in the Quint or even the one in Serenite. Next, I'm gonna take a look at the Divine Rose One palette. This was a request by one of Lexi Jong's subscribers. So Lexi Jong, thank you so much. She, she did mention in her community tab that I had the palette, I would be filming with it. One of her subscribers asked for me to compare a few shades of, from this palette, see if they're comparable. So I'll do that for you. 
And if you're here, I hope you consider subscribing and joining the family. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just swatch the ones that, I'm gonna swatch this right here, which really is what looks comparable, and maybe this, but this is a special shade. So maybe not, but I can still swatch it. So this first shade from Pat McGrath, is definitely more a cream base where this is more just sheer with silver but just based on how they look in person i can tell a significant difference but i'm not sure if you'll be able to see a significant difference on the eye and that is the shade skin show nude next i'm gonna swatch this shade here which is Veloria and this is a matte so this is Veloria and this is the one from the Quint so although they have the same tone this is like a satin shimmer and this is a pure matte Next, I will swatch Lovelace, which is this one down here. So here is Lovelace. Lovelace does have like a light brown undertone with rose gold and a hue of like a light cool purple. It's definitely different. And I will swatch this corner shade, which is extreme mahogany, but I don't expect anything like it in this palette. And no, that's definitely more warm leaning and brown. Sorry, that was a bad swatch, but I'm wiping my fingers off with my cellar water in between swatches, so I must have not let it dry enough. Next, I can definitely swatch this Asterio Solstice, which is the special shade I showed you. And that, that I would say is the best comparison to this topper shade in the Quint. Definitely. Let me see if I can put it next to this shade. Okay, so here you are. Here's the one from the Dior Quint, and this is Astral Solstice from the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 1 palette. They are pretty comparable. I would say the Pat McGrath has more shimmer and glitter flex and looks like the possibility of a fallout situation where I don't see that with the Quint. And those are really the only shades I see that may be comparable, but that you could even think to say, hmm, do those compare? But no, they do not. And let's go ahead and create a look and go from there. The box does show that it has the same six month shelf life as the other quince. I have, I attempted attempted to look at the ingredients and ensure that it had the aloe and it's it's too small I can't read it but in feeling it it does feel as great as the other quince not like that pink glow like that dark shade in the pink glow that I don't know if you purchased it or not but if you did you may have experienced it had like a film over it that you kind of had to like scrape off before you really got that good oomph and pigment and and pigmentation from the Dior shadows that we're used to from the new formula. So I'm just going to create one look in hopes of just editing this and getting it up quickly before, before or right after my live. So I'm going to start with this shade here. And if you have hooded eyes, a great tip is to work upward instead of like inward directly in because you will get that crease as well as starting to blend it into the hood of your eyes 
which is where you see it's where you want it because you want it placed where when you're looking forward anybody you're speaking to is going to be able to see that shadow and you don't have to wait to look down or blink it's just that's my preferred method just so that I know I get on the exact spot that I would need to be so that the shadow is visible. And I am using a Refer 13, which is an amazing small blending brush if you have hooded eyes. Highly recommend. Here you go. And I will blend out those harsh lines in a minute. So I'm going to try to use as many shades as possible since I'm only going to use do one look. So next I'm going to use the middle shade and I'm using the Tom Ford 03, which is a crease or shadow, a concealer or shadow brush. And I prefer to use it for shadow. And I'm just going to place this on the majority of the lid. And these are so smooth and go on so nice. Like I'm barely, barely tapping this in. Like I'm just swiping so gently. And you can see the pigment. And I'm sure I'll press in a little harder and just swipe to see what we get. And yes still pigment. I am getting a little fallout, but I did forget to tap my brush <laughs> the second time. And that did whisk away easily without staining my complexion. And I am one to do my complexion well before <laughs> my eyes. So there are the two shades and how they're playing together. Next, I'm going to go into this pink shade with a refer two. And I'm just going to apply that on the inner third of the lid and onto the inner corner. And I like to blend that upwards just so everything just seamlessly comes together. Look how easy, just easy and quick yet beautiful. Next, I'm just gonna get my small Wayne Goss artist brush and just soften this line right here. These are so soft, they'll soften a line but not remove the pigment. I just love them for this, just beautiful. There you go. And then I'll just go back into that first shade, which is this shade here, and put it there on the corner and just flick inward just to give that contrast that may be the second shade, lavender shade we applied may have taken away from. There you are. And for the bottom lash line, I'm going to get my Tom Ford 14, which is a small pencil brush. I'm going to go into this shade here that we applied on the outer corner and just softly bring that in, applying most of the pigment on the outer third of the lower lash line and then bringing it all the way across. I'm just one that really likes most of the pigment on my eye looks on this outer corner. I don't like too much deepness on going inward because I feel it just sinks my eyes. So if I focus most of the color out here as well as whisk out my lashes, I just love the look. And then I'll just dab in that pink and just bring that from that outer corner onto the lower lash line. There we are. Let me do the other eye off camera and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I am back. I did apply a little of the Gucci eyeliner in the shade Amethyst in the lower lash line, just a little. I didn't apply liner anywhere else because I didn't want to hinder the shadows. And I did apply some mascara. I have been trying a sample of the Westman Atelier mascara and I really like it. Not sure if you can tell, but it is so pretty. It separates the lashes. It's more lengthening than it is volumizing, but it does give just the right amount of volume if you're not looking for like drama, which sometimes I am. But this is a good lengthening with a little bit of volumizing everyday daily wear mascara. So here is the final look. It's a beautiful quint. I really do like the shades. And they, the one shade that I applied all over the lid, like the main part of the lid, which was this shade here, is very similar to Serenite from Chanel. However, the other shades are indeed different. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the topper shade just as a brow highlight just so I could use at least four, four out of the five shades. And I'm just gonna lightly whisk that on because I don't want it to be too much. And there you go. So did you order the romantic voyage expecting the golden browns and receive this and were pleasantly surprised shocked did you decide to keep it did you return it do you want this and are you trying to figure out how to order this and get this because at this point i don't even know it now that dior is aware of the issue if you can place the order even though the photo is wrong and get this, or if you're really gonna get the golden one with the black shade. I have no idea. There's been so much back and forth, but I hope that was helpful to you with the swatches. I hope you enjoyed the eye look. And until next time, don't forget, we're all perfectly imperfect. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Bye.